way down to Lacine, Kansas. Our next case is going to be on Alonzo Brooks, where the story is he went down with a couple other friends down to a party, and there was some miscommunication where he didn't get a ride home. And he disappeared. So we're on our way to Lacine, and when we get there, we'll tell you a little bit more. So we're here in Lacine, Kansas, Heather and I, and like I said on the way down here, Alonzo Brooks. He came down here with three friends. There was Justin, who he rode with, and there was a Tyler and a Daniel in a separate car. They came down here, uh, just beyond these trees, there's a, there's a farmhouse and a barn. The party was at the barn. And when they arrived, Tyler and Daniel mentioned that there were fights that broke out. There were some racial slurs thrown at Alonzo because it was only three. He was one in three black people that actually came to the party. So there's some racial slurs thrown. Tyler and Daniel ended up leaving 45 minutes to an hour when they arrived. And Justin, he decided to go get some cigarettes. They were out of cigarettes and Alonzo knew he was leaving. So him and a friend, who I don't know the name, him and a friend left to go get some cigarettes and he ended up in a ditch. He was high, drunk, and went to a ditch, got lost and got into a ditch. Justin um, has had said that he, later on that night, pulled out $200 out of the ATM, ended up at a strip club and he was kicked out. I'm only saying that because the story was, was questionable, but there were surveillance cameras confirmed that account that he did pull out, in fact, pull out that $200 and um, went to a strip club. So he called um, Adam um, at the party and said, hey, make sure Alonzo makes it home. There was some miscommunication as Adam left. He didn't see Alonzo. He thought he already left and ended up, Alonzo never made it home. So his family ended up coming down here, could not find him, and they did a police report. And the first officer uh, did a check, check the creek. If you can see over where the bridge is, on the far side to the left, they, the family found a hat and one of his boots. And on the opposite side, another boot was found. But there's also a theory or a story that both boots were found together, toes pointed towards the creek in an eerily way. The house where the party was, it was all cleaned out. There was no beer cans or kegs or anything. It was just everything was cleaned out. And a deputy came and walked the creek and reported negative contact, so therefore he closed the incident. So that's when the KBI got involved and then the FBI got involved. They searched this creek for days. They had the Lee Summit um, search and rescue, water search and rescue down here. They had three men on each side, three in the middle. And if Alonzo was in this creek at that time, he would have been found. And uh, nothing, nothing was found. Uh, helicopters, uh, dogs, um, nothing. And then a month later, the family who's been trying to come down here to do another search uh, finally got permission, I believe on May 1st, I believe it was, um, got permission and he was found within an hour, found within an hour behind the barn in the creek where Lee Summit said they searched that so many times he would have been found where he was finally located. When the family found the body, his complexion was okay, and the items found on the body, it did not seem like he was in the creek for a month. The coroner is in the hot seat for questionable practices. He was removing organs without consent and improperly storing body parts in New York before he came to Kansas. The coroner ruled his death undecided. FBI in Lynn County found it difficult. There are so many people involved, so many children, so many interviews done. Over 200 people were at the party and due to daylight savings, there was an hour off on the timeline. They closed the case. Unsolved Mysteries did a showing on Alonzo. The FBI reopened the case. His body was exhumed and they changed the case to a murder.
there's so many stories, so many different theories, so many children's stories involved that it's, I, I, I really, really don't know exactly what happened, but we are going to have two interviews shortly, one on an FBI witness and the other who knows of someone who did one of the suspects. What started was an issue at the party, and it really wasn't the party. It was after the party that all this was initiated. See, the brothers didn't go to the party. None of them did. The whole issue started from getting upset with Alonzo over a matter. He was 24, and she was 15, and he was hitting on her. It all started with telling her brothers that this, this black guy at the party is hitting on me. I mean, their mom, their dad. The only one that's really not so mentally ill is, and that's who I haven't said names yet, because that's my buddy's wife's. So I, um, I haven't brought her much into the conversation because of him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I still haven't talked to the guy because of knowing, you know. And I don't want to hurt my best friend or one of my best friends. So it went from the party back home to tell, I think it was first, about the issue of the party with Alonzo. There wasn't really much there, guys. There, Normally, most people would have said, hey, no big deal. You know, it's a 24-year-old guy that's just hitting on someone because she's there. And that's what Alonzo did. Mm -hmm. It wasn't it wasn't contradicted that hey Alonzo's just trying to flirt with her, trying to do something sexually with her. That was never established in this situation. And so it went from that where after at 1.30, 1.30 in the morning, and the dialogue was they couldn't they couldn't do something until later to approach Alonzo. So this is why it didn't happen until after 3 a.m. in the morning, you know that they arrived at the house, they drove in his truck, drove in his car. He was going to, you know, try to scare Alonzo at first, but then the, it transitioned to just going after him and approaching him, and, you know, they caught him from behind and hit him first and pushed him like he was, because they caught, they caught him and got behind Alonzo and held him so he could hit him. He hit him, you know, just once or twice and then let him go. Being in confusion, Alonzo was down on the ground. And so picks him up and holds him. And this is where, like I was saying, hit him three times in the temple and it just killed him. If you remember where the house is, mm -hmm. this is about 15 feet away from the house. They thought that they just hurt him, but they killed him. And so, like I said, they were afraid of getting caught with Alonzo because of people coming back for him. So they put him in truck and um, they decide to take him back to the, the barn. He um, decided, I guess, right then and there that he was going to do something with Alonzo to put him in the, the, the white refrigerator because the family had not been using the uh, refrigerator for anything. The... Um, refrigerator was somewhere in the barn. I, I can't tell you guys because it was not discussed. They talked about a few things about take, tell, wanting to take him out of state. It went on for, I guess, a, you know, at least two days just for them to decide or do something more with what they were going to do, you know, to transport his body out of state to take it somewhere so it couldn't be found or, you know, they're going to bury it or whatnot. I mean, I, I can even remember him saying was too upset that he was going to do something with the body or get caught with it. And the whole um, time, they're just thinking about what they can do to keep it hush-hush and not to give it out as far as, you know, hey, they did something. Because Alonzo, these people are looking for Alonzo, you know, this by now. Because the Alonzo's families came down to the, uh, the house to, to look for him. And the um, whole time, that Saturday and Sunday, they were still looking for him. I told people literally all along that what happened to Alonzo did not happen at that party. 
It happened about 3, 4 a.m. in the morning. But after they they decide to leave Alonzo in the cooler in the, on the 28th day, the 27th day, it was between 2 to 4 in the morning. The cops were not watching the house that they took him out there. And so I had a cousin that was talking about the issue about them three weeks, three weeks after it happened, Alonzo went uh, missing. My own cousin is the police chief of every um, person that I've ever talked about this to. They've said the same thing direct. My own family even said it, you know, that live mm -hmm. in that area. They were supposed to be acting normal, but they were acting suspicious at the same time. And you could just tell, I mean, if you ever, if, if you ever watch them behave, you know, while that time was elapsing, you could see that these people were acting out. I, I, I think what really threw them into the hateful mode was the fact that Lonzo was black. And I, I told that to the FBI. I said directly, you know, this is where it came from. We need to do something about this. And they planned to be attacked. And so that's where it started. That's where it came from. If, if Alonzo had been a 24 year old white kid, would they have acted, would, would they have wanted to have attacked him? And, and see, this was the whole subject at that party was the fact of the subject being, if Alonzo was white, there wouldn't have been something there to contradict the mental illness. Okay. Because they, they, did, they just didn't like black people. There's only so many people in that area that are. That were black uh, in that area. Yeah. He um, stated with his associates, I hate that damn, uh, you know, I, 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 like I said, I said in my email, you know, I hate this mother, you know, just because he was mm -hmm. just so mentally ill. So Alonzo was at the party so long. Well, the party's over, but is he there now by himself at the house? Uh-huh. Yeah, he was there all that time. There was okay. only a few people that were coming and going because what happened was there was a second party. And what they would do, they would come back to this party and the would say, hey, there's no one here. And they would just take off for the second party. Yeah. So he was there. He was there all that night, all that time with no one there. And, uh, and like Justin said, at 11 o'clock, he called Alonzo and he said that he was fine. There was no discrepancy in his behavior. He was happy. He was singing. He was doing all these things that would normally happen at a party. Right. I just and, feel so bad that he would have been so alone. Exactly. Exactly. And if he, if he could walk out of the place, he could. I, the, the, the FBI agent that I talked to, that was Lena. They were looking into so many things surrounding, you know, the um, investigation. And But the fact is, these guys were the same thing that they said in that restaurant that night, back in 1996, 1995, about, we're so bad around here, we can get away with a murder. And they quoted that in that restaurant that night, that such and such can get away with a murder. And they were right. They've gotten away with Alonzo's murder. I heard that he is a loose cannon, especially when he drinks, and I believe he already has several cases just in corruption of property. And this, and this is just um, one of the people that um, is a so-called suspect. Yeah. And also, I was recently told that he bought and sold the warehouse within the same year around that same area and when he was asked like what he did with it he just was like, nothing he just sold it so he just had a warehouse and did supposedly nothing with it yeah and he said that he told a story about when they were drinking and he got into a fight and it was several people beating up a specific guy he just said that they basically all ganged up several guys beating up 
one guy in my scene. They were out getting drunk, and they said that they wanted to go beat up a black guy. I don't know about that. You know that they, he had no problem, obviously, participating in an unfair fight. So that says a lot about his character and everything, too. Yes, as far as motives go, apparently this guy had a girlfriend back in high school age, and he was in love with her. She had a child six months after they found out that the child, like, I guess wasn't his, and it was actually a mixed child. So he was upset about that? Yeah. So the uh, the person that you know of that knows the suspect, um, I heard that this person was threatened. Is that correct? Uh, yes, the person who was telling me all of this information about um, the suspect was threatened by, by him. And threatened and specifically, I said, I like would kill you and I don't know where to put you and uh, that, yeah, that's all. I don't want to say more. So I was thinking, I've been thinking about this. First of all, this case, I didn't want to say, has been bothering me. I'm sure, I, maybe I've said this many times about the others, but this one's bothered me since day one. I remember when it happened, I remember being at work thinking about it, and I just remember thinking the whole freaking thing is odd to be missing for a month. But I think there's so many rumors, there's so many stories, there's so many children at the time, I won't say children, that you know, rumors are going to spread. I think it's simple. I think there was a group of guys, I think they went drinking uh, at a bar, and due to um, Alonzo being left, at the party, I think they were coming and they ran into him. So Alonzo was a victim of having friends that didn't make sure he made it home properly. So I'm not saying they were bad friends, but honestly, um, I don't think white people understand that black people coming down to a to an area, a, a country area, and this has happened more than just with Alonzo, and we don't realize who all these people are. I mean, I don't know how to explain this, but we don't see the racism as much as they do because they live it every day. So I don't think that they were aware of the danger that Alonzo was in, is what I'm saying. So to them, it's just, oops, you know, I left him, you know. But they really should have made sure that their friend made it home. And I think he's a victim of being black, and he's a victim of having friends that just didn't get it. So um, I think that Lassine, sorry to say, has a lot of racist people in it. That's just, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings down there, but especially after this. I wouldn't you're, worry you're, about hurting their feelings. <laughs> They're choosing to live there. I mean, if you knew you lived in a community that uh, was racist... Mm -hmm. You're choosing to live there. You can move away. Yeah, and I was going to say, it's time for someone in Lacine, I know a lot of people probably know the story, to step up. Because if you don't want to be known as a racist town, as a sundown town, it's time to step up and tell the story. I mean, honestly, just, just come forward. And it. I know there's been stories that people have said, it's not, I don't, I'm not aware of it being racist, or it's not racist. Well... You know, maybe you you either don't see it, uh, you're turning a blind eye. Maybe you don't see it because you're not black. Mm -hmm. 
or just because you personally haven't heard the N-word or, you know, jokes or people act that way, that doesn't mean it happens. I mean... And I don't believe you haven't witnessed that in Lucene. I think you, you hear that a lot in probably Lucene mostly. So, I mean, yeah, I think it's simple. I think they were a group of racist good old boys that went out and got drunk, came home. Lonzo was black. They beat the shit out of him. They might not have wanted to go that far, but a bunch of guys together being drunk, they took it too far. And I think there's more people involved. I don't know names, obviously. I think there's higher up people that might have been involved. But Alonzo was simply waiting for a ride. If he was outside when they ambushed him, it was because he was waiting. Yeah, I don't know what it would feel like either to be abandoned, wonder where everybody is, knowing you're stuck. He's got a hurt leg. There's no, there's nothing that he could have done about it except sitting there waiting. Where are my friends? Who abandoned me? And obviously he didn't look too hard if, oh, I, I didn't, how do you not see him? It's, I mean, how do you plus, not see the, the, the driveway is so long. I noticed too that I don't even think maybe the parents or um, a lot of people probably didn't hear it happen because it's so desolate there. And the driveway is so long, you could just been like a ways down from the barn and done it easily. Yeah, I mean, I get it, but it's not like that. That house, it's it's literally you can see the town. So when people say it's out there, it's not out there that far. Not I think, from the town. Not from the town. I, I mean, just, it's a small I think town. Lacine is out there, but not like the town. Not like yeah, no. it's not that far. You can see there, the there's town. Just from. right down the road, there's a little cafe. When we were filming our section, you can see the town from our section, and we're a hundred yards. Um, east of the mm-hmm. of the farm, and the reason we had to film there is because we were bothered by the townspeople. Just because we were filming at that location, because the only reason you're filming at that location is because they're covering the Alonzo Brooks. People knew what we were doing there, mm-hmm. and we were the drive by the sh- the drive the people driving by and then slowing down the heckling the heckling. I mean, it took us. Two days to film five minutes. Two days for five minutes because of the fact that that is how we were treated at Lacine. And then once the Lynn County Sheriff drove by, we were like, okay, we're, and we're done. We're done because this, this is just ridiculous. Ridiculous. And you guys live there and you can step up and say why not we live in a city with 700 unsolved homicides and we're saying it's enough and this is a city with tons and tons of people and you live in a town with 2000 and have one oh step i don't know maybe up. Not- so step to up i think you want to think of your town as disgusting but it's disgusting so so $100,000 to lead up to the arrest of uh, whoever is responsible for this. Please share. Please um, hit that button. Subscribe. Subscribe to us, please. And keep sharing because uh, that's the only thing that's going to get people talking. So, And if you have any ideas or if you have a loved one that we need to cover. Anyway, yes, please share. Thank you for joining us. Our next show is going to be on... The, um, on the serial killer, Richard Grissom. There's still three missing women. There's three missing women, yes. Join us for our next show. Thanks, bye.